Hello, everybody. Tim the Hulk Burkala here, along with my trusty sidekick, Caleb Coho. How you doing, um, Caleb? Am I the sidekick or are you the sidekick? I guess we're going to have to figure that out. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm probably the sidekick. But uh, we got a great matchup of debut players here today. We uh, we got Ruben Cologne, the Kingslayer. I don't know if I appreciate that nickname. Is it earned? We're going to find out. Um, and he's uh, taking on Nicholas Tuick. So this is uh, the guy that I like. And a guy that we've seen once in a match that is not on his record. So we'll see how he does in a one-on-one -on -one setting. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, I actually know a little bit about both these guys. Um, I saw Ruben play in Nergasm because I edited that match. And uh, he, he had a good showing in Nergasm. Um, I don't believe he pulled the win out on that one. But he had a really good showing. He knows his nerd stuff. So this could be interesting. And I actually played Nick in uh, Movie Battlegrounds and had a really fun match with him there. Uh, so I know both of these guys a little bit. It'll be interesting. They both know their stuff, so we'll see what happens. What I hear from you is that they both know how to talk, so I think yes. we can hear what they say in promos. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen of the fandom division, what you see here today is not a regular match. Two boring males fighting to the death. What you see here today is the rise of a future champion. A man should all be prepared to run and hide and scream when his name is mentioned under the silences of your breath. It is Ruben Cohen, a.k.a. the Kingslayer. <laughs> Strive fandom, I'm here, I'm back, I'm here to actually make a huge debut match. And yeah, I'm going up against it. Nick the Tick, Nick something, Nick Dick, I don't know. Um, but um, all I know is that he's going to get defeated. He's going to get slammed tonight, and he's just a stepping stone on my way to something greater. I want to go after the legends, the kings, the best of the best in this league. And it starts here, this match with me slaying Nick, and then work my way up until I can go up all the way up until I finally get my shot at uh, Parker. So it's going to happen. This is the beginning. I want everybody to pay close attention because this is the start of the reign of the Kingslayer. Oh, hello there. <laughs> I didn't see you. Welcome uh, to this great match. Uh, this is probably the first time you're seeing me because it's the first time I'm seeing myself in this league. Uh, playing someone called Ruby Tuesday, something like that, I don't really know. But uh, the point is, I'm no king, so you're not slaying me today, brother. Uh, James, you didn't even realize the match was today. I, I heard you were sleeping on the couch like five minutes ago, so... Whatever you're saying, uh, there's at least one boring person in this match, and it's it might be me, but who knows? We'll let you decide, and we'll find that we'll find that out as well. Um, yeah, I don't know a whole lot uh, of what goes on in this league, but I like winning stuff, so here I am. All right, Caleb Coho, well, as you say, those were some fire promos. So as uh, we will get into round number one right away, and Caleb, why don't you tell the people at home how round number one works? Round number one works like this. You're going to get 10 questions worth one point apiece from 10 different areas within the round of fandom fights. If uh, if you get a perfect round of all 10 questions, correct, you will issued a bonus question. You have three repeats for the entirety of the match and a challenge rule. Any questions as we get into round number one? No. Then we'll get um, right into it. All right, guys, your first question is going to be in the category of Marvel. Films outside of the MCU. In Venom, who voices Venom? Uh, you know what this movie makes me think of? What? Eminem just yelling Venom over and over again. <laughs> Gotta get it with the Venom! 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 God, that was so great. That was a moment, yeah. wasn't it? <laughs> Five, four, three... Two, one. Pens down. We will start with Nick. Venom, Venom, Venom. Tom Hardy. And Ruben. Uh, Tom Hardy. That is both correct. Correct. Tried to trick him with the voice. They still got it. All right. Yeah. Your second question comes to the category of Star Trek. Decker is demoted to what rank after Kirk regains control of the Enterprise at the start of Star Trek: The Motion Picture? Don't you miss the days when it was like title of movie, the motion picture? Shoot for teams, the motion picture. That's coming in 2020. Never. <laughs> oh, did you? I actually have to tell you something about that. Hey, Can I ask how uh, specific do you have to be about that? Like, do you just need the broad one, or we are uh, looking for his rank? Just the rank. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we will start with Ruben. Uh, I almost wrote Lieutenant Commander, but I went Lieutenant. 
That is incorrect, and Nick? I believe he is the first officer and then later takes on Science Lab too. That is that correct. That is correct. First officer is correct. So Nick taking that one point lead there. All right, guys, your next question is going to be in the category of DC. Finish the quote from The Dark Knight Rises. I was wondering what would break first, your spirit? Three words we're looking for. So what were you saying about shoot for teams? Um, I went on IMDb the other day and I found yeah. myself and I was part of a film called uh, Sh uh, Sh Chick Chicago. Uh, uh, yes. We should probably talk about that. We will talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was really great. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, starting with Nick. You guys really like Tom Hardy, huh? Oh, your buddy. Oh, your buddy is correct, Andrew. Okay, so hopefully you can see this, but I scratched it out and put it over your body. Uh, yeah, yeah we can accept that. Can you see it? Yep. yep. You're okay. Absolutely. All right, guys, your fourth question comes in a category I know nothing about, Middle Earth. In The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, who kills the Witch King? I uh, I went as the Witch King once for Halloween. I feel like that would be very scary, just from the name. Is that like a spooky thing? I mean, I guess so. I guess it's a spooky thing. I don't, I don't know what it is. Which is five, four... Which witch is which king? Two. One. It pens down. We will start with Ruben. Oh, sorry. Someone's calling me. Um, Eowyn. Eowyn, sorry. Eowyn is correct, or Nick? I was going to say Ruben because the whole, you know, King Slayer thing, but then I said Eowyn. Yeah, That's correct. That's correct. Because maintaining a perfect lead four yeah. questions in. All right, guys. Your next category is going to be DreamWorks. What does... Oh boy, Koho, you might Sekel Khan. Sekel Khan cite as his reason for how he knows Miguel and Tulio aren't gods in The Road to El Dorado. Welcome <laughs> to the world of DreamWorks. You can get a you can get a Shrek or you can get an El Dorado. Underrated movie. It's pretty good. Uh, I like wanna ask for a repeat, but also I don't know the answer. <laughs> Gotta look uh -huh. you guys know the thing. So good. Such a good five, four, three, two, uh -huh. one. Pens down. We will start with Nick. His father. I don't know. Uh, correct. Soccer. <laughs> uh, I just played their close. <laughs> also incorrect. Gods don't bleed because Miguel sweats blood. This is true. That does happen in the film. All right. So Nick Yo. still maintaining a one point lead, but loses that perfect round. All right, guys, your next uh, category is going to be Fandom Oscars. Monsters, Inc. won one of its four Oscar nominations in what category? Hey, so, sorry, you broke up for me. Can, I, can you okay. start over? Yep. Technical repeat. Okay. Monsters, Inc. won one of its four Oscar nominations in which category? Um, this is a great movie. Uh, I would say so. I know you have feelings about this movie. I love this movie. This movie yeah, I know. Movie. I know you love this movie. I have feelings about La La Land as well, but we don't have time for that. It's not fandom yet. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Pens down. Pens down. All right, we will start with Ruben. Um, I'm definitely wrong. Um, I went uh, best original score. That is incorrect, and no, I love the too. That was it. we were looking for best original song. You guys were on the right path. Ah, right. right path. That score should have won that year, though. Great I maintain it should have won. <laughs> All right, guys. Your seventh question comes to the category of the MCU. What MCU film is the official start of Phase Three? I, uh, I enjoy the Phase 3. I am excited for the Phase 4. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, come on, come on. Some of those are super exciting. It's Marvel. Yeah, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Pens down. We will start with Nick. Captain America Civil War. That is correct. And Ruben? Captain America Civil War. All that is right. correct. 
So Nick still maintaining his one point lead as we get into the pent ultimate question. Not the pent ultimate, it's the favorite in that way. <laughs> the, the trip All right. Wizarding World is your category. What is the name of Harry's aunt that he accidentally blows up in the Prisoner of Azkaban? Both went to the board pretty confident on that one. See how it goes. It <laughs> seems like they might know. You sure aunt. you know this, Nick? No, who? <laughs> who is it? Okay. Ooh. Ooh, shit talk. I'm not really sure. Either. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We will start with uh, Ruben. Bank March. That is correct. And Nick? I decided to be a dick, so it's March played by Pam Ferris and her dog Ripper. Ah, <laughs> well, that is more information than we needed, but correct. I knew that too. <laughs> All right, guys, your pet ultimate question comes in the category of James Bond. Which Bond actor has made the most canon appearances as the titular character? <laughs> you said tit. <laughs> I'm an immature child. Uh, so is Boatman. Fuck Boatman. Chicago. <laughs> Chicago. Fuck Boatman. Chicago. Five, <laughs> four, three, uh, two, one. Pens mm -hmm. down. Do we it, will start with Nick. Uh, I had Sean Connery and I wrote Pierce Brosnan. That is incorrect, Ruben. Sean Connery. That is That's also, also incorrect. incorrect. Looking for Roger Moore. Roger Moore. Yeah, Can I challenge that? Because I thought Roger Moore, Moore doesn't on. play. Hang on. He plays a fake James Bond in one of the films, doesn't he? Are you officially you, challenging? You can officially challenge if you'd like. So you're 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 you said specifically as the title. Um, we said right? in the question is which Bond actor has made the most canon appearances as the titular character. The answer is Roger Moore. So if you would like to challenge, we will look into it. Otherwise, you can. Uh, uh, can I? Okay, so we are back from the challenge that Ruben laid out. And um, unfortunately, uh, we will not be awarding him the challenge because the answer was Roger Moore. Roger Moore played Bond seven times. Sean Connery did play him seven times as well, but uh, one of the films was not canon, uh, which is why we specified canon in the question. So um, the answer, Roger Moore, is correct. And we will move on to the next question, which this time is the uh, final question of the round, which is in Pixar. All right, guys, in Pixar, Brad Bird has directed how many Pixar films? Um, I'm guessing by someone's shirt that they like Brad Bird. Ooh. Oh, I didn't even notice that. I wonder who. I know, I wonder. I wonder who. Is it yours? Because he likes red also? Uh, uh, yep, yeah, I'm Four, three. I'm sorry. Two, one, pens down. We will start with Ruben. Uh, I know he did Incredibles 1 and 2. I think he did one more. I think it was Ratui 3. That is correct. And Nick? Three. All right. Both correct. So at the end of round number one, we have Nick in the lead with seven to Ruben's six. Uh, both very good round ones, Caleb, for a couple of uh, rookies to this league coming in. They, they know what they're doing, so... Absolutely. Uh, we, we are now going to uh, move into round number two. Caleb, would you like to tell them how that round works? Round number two works like this. You're each going to get a chance to spin from the lovely wheel from wheeldecide.com. If you like the category you land on, you're going to get five questions worth two points apiece. You can up for multiple choice, but DVL is the point down to being worth one. You do have the option to respin if you don't like the category you land on the first time. However, if you hit upon a choice, you are not allowed that luxury. Uh, you still have all three of your repeat, repeats for the entire of the match. Nick still has his challenge. Any questions as we get to round number three? Okay, so uh, Nick, you are in the lead. Would you like to spin the wheel first or second? Yeah, I'll go first. Could be fun. All right, so your spin. Sure. Well, as soon as it. There we go. And okay. Under the All there. right, your spin is away. And it lands on opponent's, opponent's choice. choice. Okay. 
That's what so, I want. Ruben. <laughs> the categories that you can choose from are right. Middle Earth, Wizarding World, MCU, Marvel, Scores and Soundtracks, Fandom Quotes, Disney Live Action, and Pixar. And uh, you are allowed to consider Okay, um, so... Oh, yeah, I'm not. I am allowed to? Yep, you are allowed to confer with your manager on a bonus choice. Okay. So James will be out of bag. Okay, okay. Um, so there's three categories that we can really choose between. It's either fandom quotes, um, uh, Middle Earth, or uh, what was the other one? There, there was, oh, scores and soundtracks. Knowing Middle you, Earth, I, could... I will know some. Yeah, Middle Earth seems like the best opportunity to steal. However... It, it depends on if you want to go. I don't know what he knows. He might have had time to study this because. So should we give him something that we know he might not be good at, or something that? Something like I'm definitely need an answer at. in five. I would say go for four, him not knowing more than you know. Three, two. Okay, uh, I can't one. hear you. Uh, middle Earth, Middle Earth. Let's just do Middle Earth. Okay. So Nicholas, you will get your questions. I can hear you. Right. I just talk. All right. Nick, you're gonna get your questions in Middle Earth. There we go. All right. Cool. Your questions in Middle Earth, Nick. Are you ready? Yeah. How many films in the Middle Earth series does Gollum appear in? Four. That is correct for two points. All right, your next question in Middle Earth. What rank does Faramir hold in the two towers? Captain of Gondor. That is correct for two points. All right, your next category, or your next question, rather. Which member of Thorin's company climbed a tree to see which direction to go in Mirkwood in the Desolation of Smaug? Oh, damn you. Wait a minute. Am I overthinking this? <laughs> is, is it not Bilbo Baggins? Is that your final answer? No. Yeah, multiple choice. All right, your multiple choice options are A, Thorin. B, Bofer, C, Nori, or D, Bilbo? You suck, Tim. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You don't suck. Ah, <laughs> uh, Bilbo. That is correct for one point. Yeah, um, mm. All right. Your next question in Middle Earth. What was the only weapon made that could pierce a dragon's hide and is used to kill Smaug? Uh, it's, it's just called a black arrow. That is correct for two points. In the words of Robert Parker, Coho, he is maneuvering his way through this round. Oh, oh my god, stupid. And your final question in Middle Earth. Who leaves the Fellowship to accompany Frodo to Mordor at the end of the Fellowship of the Ring? I'm sorry, did you say leaves or leaves? Leaves. To accompany Frodo to Mordor at the end of Fellowship. Samwise Gamgee. That is correct for two points. So, at the end of Nick's turn, he has gotten his score up to a oh, big 16 geez. points as we get into the next spin for Ruben. All right, Ruben, your spin is in and it lands on. Wizarding World, would you like to keep it or spin again? Uh, I'm going to keep it. We're going to keep okay. it. Okay. All right. Your round two questions, Ruben, in the category of Wizarding World. In The Crimes of Grindelwald, what does the vial that the Niffler steals from Grindelwald contain? I do not remember that film at all. I do not blame you, it's a trash game. <laughs> Five, four, three. I'll repeat the question. All right, that is your first repeat. In Fantastic Beasts, The Crabs of Grindelwald, what does the vial that the Niffler steals from Grindelwald contain? Just 
scouring his brain for an answer. <laughs> I, I know it. It's in my notes. I just... Uh... An answer in five, four, three, um, two... Repeat the question. It's there. All right. Oh, it's the second repeat. In The Crimes of Grindelwald, what does the vial that the Niffler steals from Grindelwald contain? Okay. It's, um... Okay, I'm hoping this is right. I'm not even sure. And I know he's going to steal if I'm wrong, but... Isn't it like the uh, blood of Dumbledore and Grindelwald? We can accept that for two points. That is correct for two points. We can accept that for two points. Yep. Hey, All right. All right, your second question in Wizarding World. Steve Cloves has written all but one of the original eight Harry Potter films. Which one did he not write? Recently discovered that you hate this franchise, and it makes me hate you. I don't hate the franchise. It's just it's not hate. Kind of need an answer in five. Don't disrespect uh, Three. Multiple choice, because I know he'll get it for two points if I don't know it. All right, your options are A, The so, Order of the you're Phoenix. You're the screenwriter, right? Like, like what, what film he did is, wasn't a screenwriter on. Uh, yes, your options are A, The Order of the Phoenix, B, The Half-Blood Prince, C, The Prisoner of Azkaban, or D, The Goblet of Fire. I have no idea. Um, I'm just going to take a random guess. Uh, Half-Blood Prince. That is incorrect. Nicholas, the chance for one point to deal. I believe Order of the Phoenix was written by Michael Goldenberg. That is correct for a one-point steal. All right, Ruben, your third question was in the world. In Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, what spell does Harry learn from the Half-Blood Prince's book and use against Malfoy? All right, let me just make sure I pronounce it right. I think it's Sephora. All right, I'm going to go with Second Sephora. <laughs> that is correct. I just want to make sure I'm pronouncing it right. Yep. Eight points. I've got you, Coho. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for saving me. All right, your penultimate ultimate question of the round in Wizarding World. What type of creature does Professor Sprout teach about in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets? Uh, mandrakes. Um, Two points. Freshly grown mandrakes. But... Yep, mandrakes. And your oh. last question in Wizarding World. Mm. What year of oh, hang school? On, hang on. Hang on. Uh, if I ask for a repeat of the question, does that if you're, count? If you're, if you're thinking about challenging, we can give you the repeat. Did yeah. I get a repeat? Uh, what type of creature does Professor Sprout teach about in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets? Okay, I'll leave it. Okay. All right. All right. Your last question in Wizarding World. What year of school is Ginny Weasley in in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2? She is just one year under um, Harry Potter, so that would be year six. That is correct for another big two points. Yeah, but all right. So at the ah. end of that round, Nicholas holds the lead with 17 with that one point steal, but Ruben is not far behind at all with 14 as we get into round number three. Yeah, this is a great match so far. I mean, I think that, um, you know, they didn't, or uh, definitely like uh, Middle Earth worked out for Nick for sure there. Uh, that definitely, you know, worked out for him, spinning opponent's choice. But um, Ruben showed that he knows his Whispering World a little bit. So that worked out sure. for sure. Um, but why don't we move on to round number three, Caleb? You can tell them how it works. Yay! Round number three works like this. This is the betting round. It works like this. We are going to give you the category of the question you are about to receive. You are going to tell us how many points you'd like to bet between zero and two points. If you get the question right, you will gain those points. If you get the question wrong, you will lose those points. If you bet zero, we ask you still play along for stats purposes. We go until someone is mathematically eliminated or the score reaches zero. Any questions as we get to round number three? I mean, uh, they're muted, but I bet they're the same. Oh, I, I have one repeat, right? You, you have, have one repeat, repeat left. For the okay. Okay. All right. And uh, has all three. you got all three in a challenge? You got all three in a challenge, don't okay. So, guys, um, do we have any other questions before we go in? Fire away. Okay. And then, uh, James, if you can uh, well, I guess it doesn't matter. If well, you can stay cammed on, but you can just mute off. Um, and then when conferring happens. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so guys, your first category in round number three is going to be Marvel. How many points would you like to bet between zero and two? Just write it down on your board, and we'll ask for it in a moment. Marvel, Marvel, Marvel. Nick, you suck. Thank you, Jimmy. Wow. The Marvel, the Marvelous Miss Marvel. Five, 
four, three, ten. two, one. Okay, uh, Ruben, how many points do you want to bet? Uh, I'm going to bet zero. Okay, and <laughs> Nick. One. One Ooh. point. All right, so stats yeah. only for Ruben, but one point from Nick. Guys, your question in Marvel is as follows. What is the name of the evil Poppy's hideout in Kingsman, the Golden Circle? I he hate looks a little confused, so he might be glad he bet zero. Uh, Nick is uh, wearing a majestic beard. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 very, it's very nice. Very nice. Very, very nice beard. Four, three, two, one. All right, stats purposes, we will go to Ruben. Uh, I, I might have got this right, but Poppy Lane. And Nick. Poppy Lane. Both are correct, but Nick is the only one who gets a point. Brings his total up to 14 to 14. Four point game as we get into your second question, which is in the category of Jurassic Park. How many points would you like to bet on Jurassic Park? You got this, Ruben. <laughs> Nick, you still like guessing myself constantly. Hey, Jim. <laughs> James is doing something pretty revolutionary and managing. He is trash talking. Focus on my sexy hair and glasses. You got this. <laughs> Or three, two, one. Ruben, how many points you bet? I'm gonna bet two. All right, and Nick. Oh, it's Daddy. One. Oh, okay, interesting. interesting. All, right. All right, your question in Jurassic Park: What type of dinosaur do the main characters see hatch while touring the facility in Jurassic Park? That's all do you the remember the time that, tuned in for. Do you remember the time that Robert started to sing the Jurassic Park theme and it turned into the Game of Thrones theme? That's true. That is the one, thing that happened. Three, two, one. All right. We will go to uh, Nick first. You got raptors here? Velociraptor. And Ruben? Velociraptor. Both correct. So Ruben bringing his total up to 16. Closing that gap a little bit. Three point game now at this point with three questions left. And your next category, boys, is Worlds of DC. So, how many points do you want to bet in Worlds of DC? Ruben, how you long do you think before they change the name of the category again? I don't know what you just said. Oh. I said, How you long? You could change it to the bad movies. That's a good start. Uh, you're not wrong. I was, I was yeah, saying, yeah, how yeah. long do you think it is until DC changes the name of this category again? <laughs> There's a couple good movies in there, though. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Uh, so, Nick, how many points you bet? I said one again. All right. And Ruben? Two. All Two. right. Guys, your question in Worlds of DC. In Shazam, how do Billy and Freddy get out of school? I love this movie. Also, for Kane McMillan, Shazam! Shazam! I just rewatched it. Um, it's good. I love it. It's fun. I wouldn't say I love it, but it's fun. I enjoy I enjoy it when I watch it. It's kind of forgettable, in my opinion. Leave. <laughs> Four. Three. All right, I will. No, I'm just kidding. Two, yeah, one. Go. All right, we will start with Ruben. Uh, pretends to be his, uh, Billy pretends to be his parent as Shazam. And Nick. Shazam to be Yeah, we can accept both those answers. Both are correct. Nick going up another point. Ruben eight. Still closing that gap. Alright, closing that gap as we get into your penultimate question, which is in the category of Rocky. How many points would you like to bet on Rocky? It's only a two I have no idea about Ruben's strengths in this category, but just for a fact, sports movies are garbage and should never be asked about. Agreed. Wow, that is <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Oof, oof. Ugh. Who doesn't like Rocky? Leave both of you. We're geeks, not fit people. Do you see this? Body? Rocky is a geeky category. Oh, you right. are wrong. Rocky, right. Three, two, <laughs> one. Comes down. Uh, we'll get the bet first from Ruben. Uh, one with two again. I kind of have to. All right, and Nick. It's zero. I haven't seen him recently. So. All right. So if All Ruben right. hits this, he ties up the game. Yeah, if Ruben hits this, he ties the game. Your question in the category of Rocky. 
How many films in the Rocky Creed franchise does Apollo Creed physically appear in? Did you know that I physically appeared in a Creed film? Is that true? That's very true. Yeah. Actually, I didn't know All that. Right. I actually no. did not know this. Physically this is, appearing, no. it's um. You have to write it down. Oh, 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 sorry. Make sure you're good. Yep. Three, two, one. For stats purposes, Nick. Guys in the fourth one, so four. And Ruben. Four. Both we are tied. Game. Right, you're gonna ask the easiest question ever. A little bit. Guys, your final question that you can bet points on is Star Wars. Star Wars. All tied. So. Star Wars. Interesting strategies to be had here. Nick. <laughs> All right, Ooh, Nick Big and Ruben. Two. All right, so Koho, right. we are in the situation. If one hits while the other misses, they win. If they both miss, or if they both hit, we're it going to sudden win. death. So, guys, your question in Star Wars. In Star Wars, A New Hope, Luke tells 3PO to shut down all garbage mashers on what level? I have a strong feeling we're going to sudden death, Kello. This could be amazing. I'm. This could be the best debut we have had this year, maybe. Outside of one KO by one macaw. Yeah, you sound very <laughs> sure about that, kid. Five, four, three, Just to repeat the two. Question, repeat the question. All right, that's Ruben's last repeat, and the question is, in Star Wars, A New Hope, Luke tells 3PO to shut down all garbage bashers on what level? Five. Four, well, four, A New Hope has eight three, letters. Two. And it's episode four. <laughs> One. The is hands down, nine. we will start with Nick. Shut down all garbage bashers on the detention level. And Ruben? Detention level, sudden death it is. <laughs> all right. We are going to sudden death. All right, so wow. here's how this is going to go. Um, James, we are going to take you out. For you the, can uh, never stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can, because I control it. All right, guys. So we are going to sudden death. This is how it works. Uh, the We go back to whiteboards. Round number one, the first person to miss while the other person hits um the person who hits is the winner so that's how this is going to work um do we have any questions as we get into sudden death that's going to be a no okay um and then just a reminder uh everybody hands on screen while we play the round yep. hands play the on screen. Just okay. to be safe. all right here we go all right guys your first question in sudden death and all these questions are going to be mixed bag. Mixed bag. In Avengers Endgame, what game are Tony and Nebula playing together while stranded out in space? I've seen this movie eight times. I've seen this movie five times. Good for you. I'm proud of you. Catching up. <laughs> Ten. Yeah, see, there we go. See, we got a real well, fan. Okay, game. I see how it is. I don't own it on digital yet. But... I do. Ha! Ah! I bought it on Blu-ray. I'm waiting for the Blu-ray. All right. So we'll start with Nick. Uh, paper football. And Ruben? Paper football. Both are correct. You technically don't use a paper. Metallic or whatever, but... Yeah, whatever. All right. All right, guys. Your next mixed bag sudden death question. In The Phantom Menace... Qui-Gon tells Anakin that they are microscopic beings that create the force inside of someone. What are these called? <laughs> you guys uh... <laughs> I wrote this question. This no, Tim, you don't really suck. I hope you know <laughs> You suck, suck, Tim! You suck! Get out of here! Five, four, three, <laughs> two, one. We'll go to Ruben. Okay, Ruben. so I try to spell it nicer, but it's mid-chlorine. Uh, mid uh, mid Koreans. Um, why don't we? You go can to look. It's like it's mid, like midi chlorians right there. Hang on, Nick. So I have midi chlorians. 
Um, your next question, guys, in Sudden Death. What is the name of Odin's father in the Thor movies? Sorry, you cut out. Okay, technical repeat. Yeah, please. What is the name of Odin's father in the Thor movies? All right. This has been a tense game. Both players playing a hell of a game for sure. Five, four, three, two, one. We will start with Ruben on this one. Okay. Um, hopefully, I'm not getting the movie MCU and like regular uh, mythology and correct, but it's four. And Nick. Ruben probably slayed in Queen Boar. We are going both. again. Correct. Correct. Are we at twenty-four, right. twenty-five? Um, 25. Okay. All right. Your next sudden death question. Who is the second person Batman says is his greatest enemy at the start of the Lego Batman movie? I really like this movie. You know who doesn't like this movie? Cody Newberry. Cody Newberry, my bestest friend in the entire world. And my greatest enemy. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, five. Repeat. Four. All right. Repeat. All right. Who is the second person Batman says is his greatest enemy at the start of the Lego Batman movie? Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We will start with Nick. Not too sure on this one, boys. Is it Superman? And Ruben? I think this is it, guys. Um, I said Joker. I knew that was wrong. And your winner, Nicholas Tui! It is indeed Superman. What a match, Tim. Yeah, this was insane. The fact that it was 26 to 25. Um, that's an incredibly high scoring game. That's a great game. Both of these guys uh, know their shit. That's for sure. Um, man, yeah, this was this was great. This was absolutely great. Uh, what do you what do you think, Caleb? Uh, this was a stellar uh, game, and uh, I have something to announce in post match interviews about this match. Uh, so all right. So sound great game. Cool. Um, all right. So I'll go ahead. I'll get some post match interviews with these guys, starting with our winner, Nicholas Tuig. Uh, yeah. And there we go. All right. Uh, Nick. You uh, you pulled out a tough win here today. How do you feel? Uh, it was a fun time, man. Uh, I was really worried because there was a lot a lot of stuff I did in there that could have just won it outright. Um, not going multiple choice on Bilbo, betting more on Rocky. Um, Ruben was great, great opponent. It was a it was a hell of a time, and I'm exhausted. <laughs> How are you? Kevin? Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know what? I am riveted. I had a great I'm time hosting this match. No one asks the interviewer how they feel. You are a very nice gentleman. Um, <laughs> You know, I have very special news for you. With this win, you have broken a record that was set at okay. the start of Fandom Fights. You now hold the record for singles point record. Uh, no, you have beaten Jake Marangoni's score of 24 with 26 points scored in a single match. So congratulations to you. You now Thank hold you. a record that has been long <laughs> since coveted in Multiplex. So congrats very congratulations exciting. to you. Uh, with that win, is there anyone you're looking forward to trying to play next now that you got that first win under your belt? Uh, well, first of all, I, I got to thank Ruben for that record because uh, we wouldn't have gotten that far had he not answered the questions. Um, so thank you to Ruben. As far as who I'm facing next, I don't know. Who's good? Give me, uh, give me a good one. You know, <laughs> Ruben's pretty there good. Are, there are many people. <laughs> there are. And many names. Indeed. And we'll figure it out. You we'll figure it out together. Record and, uh, and knowledge level. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see All who right. I can come up with. You. But uh, great day, great debut. Oh, and we will man, see you Jake, again. Jake's mad Nothing. about his record being broken. Maybe, maybe he wants to do a little something, something. But yeah, we'll get there. I would love to see that. I would love to see that. <laughs> uh, but you know what? We will see you very soon. Maybe Jake will right. come after you. Who knows? The fellowship might fight you. But we'll see you in your next match. Over Thank to you. our unfortunate losers today, Ruben Cologne and his manager, James Spence, his manager teammate. Uh, yeah, you guys, uh, you played a hell of a game. Just came up on the short end of the stick. How do you guys feel? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you, you can um, keep talking, uh, Caleb. I'll take over from here. Ruben, uh, um, nice. you beat the points record in fandom. How does that feel? I mean, it feels good. I'm more so beating myself up about what I did during the match because, again, I choked. There were specific things I could have done differently. Opponent's choice. He landed on opponent's choice. I give Buddy. him the one category that you, he could have studied. Not choke. Remember, we, we control the narrative. You did not choke. We face a competitor who, again, he beat you by one point and also beat the singles points record. And let's not forget that he doesn't have any matches here. We weren't able to know his strengths and weaknesses. If we chose anything else, you would have been the winner today. And that's all we need to focus on. Not, oh, who answers some dumb animated movie? Qu anim animated movies are babies. No one cares about them. And sure, you missed, actually, I have the stat here. You missed six questions today. Six questions, and you got 25 points. That's pretty incredible. And no matter what this little Lord of the Rings hater hobbit over here says, you dominated the field today. You could be anybody else in this league. And they all know that. And they will run from you. And that's all you need to focus on. This you is why he's my hype man. This yeah. is why he's my hype man. Because, you know, I could be down and out. But this guy will get me pumped up and ready to go. Yeah, I want to take on the next person. Um, Nick was a great match. I knew it was going to be a fantastic first match for me. I even said it as much. Um, you know, he he got lucky. I wasn't prepared for specific uh, situations. Uh, the opponent's choice. I, I, I was hoping Jurassic Park was on the wheel because I prepped myself up for that. Um, but honestly, I'm fine with the way I, per I performed tonight. I proved that I am a top competitor, that I can take on some of the best and go toe to toe. And yeah, okay, Nick did break the record. So did I. So obviously I'm up there. So th thank you. Thank you, James. That That's what I need. I feel much better now. And remember, um, there, are, there are no losers today. They're, only the losers today are the ones on the desk who do all the talking, thinking, thinking they have power here. There is a winner and a a less fortunate and today you are a winner that's a way to do it cool um well those are supposed match interviews uh and uh i don't know who this james spence guy is but uh he's it seems like, like cody he, to me yeah i was gonna say he seems like, like he's ripping he seems like he's ripping off a uh, better more competent manager who uh you know manages champions but we will Ooh. get on to <laughs> the end Ooh. of this match Damn. this again, was a fantastic match like you said uh high scoring game um so it was really really great um I love seeing high scoring games. It's it's they're the best. They're the most fun to watch. They're the most fun to be a part of. So it was great to be a part of this one. Absolutely. And we had two players in this match who demonstrated great knowledge. Uh, and you know what? I can't be upset about this match in any way, even though there's a guy in here named Kingslayer, and I think that's a bullshit name. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's going to do it for us. That has been uh, Ruben. That has been James. That has been Nick. That has been Tim. That has been Coho. This has been Phantom Fights. I just referenced myself in the wrong tense, and that's going to do it for us. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you guys real soon.